Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about scanning the film using XT3. This video popped up to my notice a few months ago. It was quite interesting and wanted to try it myself. In the video, he was using special tools such as copy stand, film holder, and light table, but I saved my investment to do it under a limited budget. Before anything, I needed to take a film first. I could have used a disposable camera like a quick snap, but bought a second-hand film camera instead for fun. This is a camera I bought, an old Canon about 50 years old. This time, I used monochrome negative film with it. Now, I'm going to show you the tools I used. Watch the product link in the description box below. The camera is Fujifilm X-T3 and the lens is XF 35mm f1.4. I would have used a macro lens, but since I don't have it, I used a macro tube instead. I bought a compatible one, although Fujifilm has a genuine product. Just a one-time trial, not going to be using it in the future anyway. These macro tubes come with 10mm and 16mm as a set. I bought these as a set since I didn't have a clue as to what these numbers indicate. I tested both 10mm and 16mm on the 35mm lens and found that 10mm was the right match. You can use the 16mm tube as well enabling more pixels on the picture part. But in this circumstance, focusing will be very difficult even at f8 aperture. So my choice was 10mm. By placing these tubes onto a normal lens, you will be able to get closer to the object like a macro lens. Although it's not going to be as flexible of course. This was taken without the tube at minimum distance. And this one was with it. See how close you can get. It's not going to have as much flexibility as a macro lens, but for those who are not so serious, it's enjoyable enough. By the way, these macro tubes I bought are not good. And this is a slide copy adapter. I thought it can be handmade using household items. So I looked around the house, but couldn't be bothered, so bought it at Amazon. This is where to slide the film, but be aware, do not set it naked. Can you see these metallic parts here to set the film? If you slide it naked, it will be scratched. Moreover, film needs to be flat as it is often curved. You hence need a film holder to make the film flat. I bought this frame at Amazon, but unfortunately it wasn't ideal. So I created a self-made film holder. And what is different is the size of the frame. The one I got from Amazon doesn't have an allowance in the margin. When I scan and edit it with Lightroom, I especially need a certain margin. It's easier to demonstrate, so I will explain it later. Here, all I did was to cut out one frame size from the piece of paper and taped the two. Then I pasted white tapes here to create a space in between, enabling the film to side slip. It opens and shuts with a tape. Next, the ring size of this slide copy adapter is 52mm and it matches perfectly with XF 35mm f1.4. So you can use it directly as it is. If you were to use other lenses, you may need step up or step down rings in between. And the editing software is the Lightroom. Well, here are the procedures. Since I'll be using only the natural sunlight rather than light fixture, I set up a tripod and a camera in a position with plenty of sunlight. Then I enclose the film in a self-made film holder. Insert the film holder in the slide copy adapter, then adjust the position of the film. The original video I introduced earlier stated that it should be focused on the grain, but I found it hard to find the grain on my film. So what I did was to focus on the rectangular hole that's placed at the edge of the film. I took the picture in RAW, old white balance, F8 aperture. 200 ISO, 
You can calculate an ideal shutter speed according to these aperture and ISO. I set it at 1 13th. But there really isn't what should be. You can choose whatever is ideal for you. And 2 seconds self timer to prevent from camera shake. Now press the shutter. Next, edit with Lightroom. First of all, hit the white balance selector and click anywhere margin on the film. It's the aforementioned reason for leaving the margin. Next, invert the tone curve, since it's a negative film. From here onwards, adjust small details to your likings, but be aware that since tone curve is inverted, control bar is also inverted. For example, the exposure. When you turn it up, it will get darker, and turning it down makes it brighter. The operation is opposite to what you would normally do. Then crop the picture and adjust the angle. You can leave the black frame if you wish. Lastly, export. In fact, I also wanted to show you color negative version. I actually put color negative film on the camera and took some photos, but I didn't finish it. I mean, I couldn't finish it. Because the film camera was too old and started making a strange noise when I pressed the shutter. It's probably broken and I lost my motivation. So I couldn't show you color negative version today, but the steps of the scanning and the editing will be totally same as the steps now I have shown you. This process of scanning a film slide by slide may perhaps be bothersome, but the merit of doing this allows you to adjust as to your likings. Okay, this is it for now. Please press good if you like my video and subscribe my channel and Instagram. See you again at the next video. Bye!